What comes to your mind when I say the word criminal? Immediately your brain thinks drug lords, serial killers, and whoever invented Pringles' packaging. We immediately think of the most vile, grotesque actions anyone can think of. This is why there's such a negative connotation around the word. So I'm here to show you that not all criminals are child abusers, psychopathic angels of death, or Frederick John Bauer. Good riddance, asshole. Here are a bunch of criminals who knew where to draw the line and had standards. The grammar vigilante of Bristol is literally just a guy who just goes around correcting signs. He also specializes in removing apostrophes. Matter of fact, this guy made a tool he likes to call the apostrophizer to reach the highest signs and remove their apostrophes. This, this is too beautiful to call vandalism. Someone give this man an honorary arts degree. At the very least, have a GigaChad certification. This guy stole a car with a child in it and had the decency to return the little thing. She left her son in the car with the car running because she planned on just being inside for a couple minutes. Well, while she was in the store, a man got into her car and drove away. Leary says she was in shock when she saw the man drive back to the market, scold her, and threaten to call the police on her for leaving her son in the car. She says the man ordered her to get her son out of the car, and then he drove off in it again. His common decency may be kind of twisted, but you know, he's got the spirit, he's learning, he's getting there. That's a kind of Giga Chad move. This guy rizzed up his prison guard so hard that she fell for him and busted him out of jail. Before she busted him out, he was getting special treatment like getting more food in his meals and more leeway after curfew. The guy was living the life. Back to her freeing him though. She's literally his getaway driver. What's even crazier is that she wasn't just a prison guard, no. She was the assistant director of corrections. She probably thought I can fix him and instead what happened was he ended up breaking her. Do you know how much riz he needed for all of these things to happen? His job prospects aren't looking so hot either because, well, he's fixated on killing his ex-girlfriend. He gets gigachad points for the Riz, but negative points for psychotically wanting to kill his ex, so... I'm afraid I can't give you the gigachad, sir. Now a true gigachad is Mr. Superdude51, who ripped the tag off a mattress. This man is a national hero, sticking it to the authorities since time immemorial. In 2013, classified information regarding the National Security Agency of America's activities were leaked. These activities included the following, compelling Verizon to give them metadata for their subscribers, and connections with a data mining program that gave the NSA direct access to the servers of large companies such as Facebook and Google. Who leaked this classified information? We don't even need to ask because the mastermind behind all this revealed himself like the gigachad he is. Edward Snowden came forward and said these words, I do not feel the need to hide, for I have done nothing wrong. The way Edward Snowden confessed to doxing the NSA was like when Joker admitted to murder on live TV. It must have felt absolutely cathartic for him. Certified GigaChad behavior. Steven Sanderson was just chilling in his jail cell when a convicted pedophile became his bunkmate. I'll let the video speak for itself. To the second count of uh, murder in the second degree. Guilty? Yes, sir. And doing so freely and voluntarily? Yes. Doing so because you are guilty? Uh, yes, sir. All right. The reason I killed him was because he was a child molester. But you did in fact kill him. Oh, sure. And you intended to kill him. Oh, sure. Yes. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to tell you where it started. Go ahead. All right. Well, we were, he was my bonkey, and I had found out that he was in prison for uh, child molestation. A really bad case. So um, that night he was trying to justify why he did it, and I just told him to be quiet, and he would have to leave in the morning to find a new cell but he continued to talk about it and try to justify it. So he was a little bit bigger than me, so I got down and I hit him in his face a few times and when he fell, I wrapped a cord around his neck and I took his life. That is Giga Chad behavior right there. He was unbelievably calm in his admission of guilt. He said, fuck it, I'm here for life anyway. There's nothing a little extra is gonna do to me. Now, usually I don't condone cold-blooded murders, but... Okay, listen, you might think to yourself, that's a human life right there. Yeah, but our lives all have a certain value. One life may not be worth as much as another. Don't believe me? Let me ask you then. Why does the law assign punishments according to the gravity of the action done? Why are people 
awarded Nobel Prizes because our actions have consequences, and these consequences are what create value. Money, fame, status, relationships, the results of all the actions we do give our lives an invisible numerical value. And the moment that guy assaulted a child, his life went into the negatives. What about the value of my life, you ask? Uh, on second thought, I don't want to talk about it. You know what, we're, we're, we're all equal. It's time for you to learn about one of the folk heroes of Australia, Ned Kelly. Remember the thumbnail of this video? Yeah, it's actually based on the things Ned Kelly has done. This guy's life was a fucking movie. Bear with me here, because it's story time. As a kid, Ned Kelly saved another kid from drowning. By age 16, Ned Kelly had already been arrested three times, and at 16, he served three months in jail for assault. Not even a year later, he got three years in prison for the receipt of a stolen horse. Ned Kelly lived clean for a few years, that is until he was 23, when a certain police officer Fitzpatrick went to the Kelly household to arrest Ned's brother Dan. Ned and Dan then ran. <laughs> I ran. But only after Ned shot Fitzpatrick in the wrist, their mother Ellen was then arrested for abetting Ned in his attempted murder of Fitzpatrick because she cheered Ned on when he was fending Fitzpatrick off. Later in that same year, Ned, Dan, and Ned's two friends tried running a whiskey distillery in a remote area to try and raise enough money to bail Ellen out of jail. But then they received a warning that four policemen had tracked them down and were going to arrest them. So what did they do? They staged an ambush bush on these four policemen, killing three of them and forcing one to surrender and run away. And thus, the Kelly Gang was born. In later years, the Kelly Gang would go on to become heroes to some and thugs to others. But since I'm making a video about criminals who were giga chads, I'm inclined to skew the story one side. To tell you the rest of the story, allow me to recite a ballad of Ned Kelly's later years and his shenanigans with the Kelly Gang leading up to his death. Ned Kelly sought to free the poor from corrupt police, freed them from the debt of their lease. He said, you are now free from your creditors, and in turn the poor vouched for his character. The Kelly gang helped more locals, and as a result the people got more vocal. Gained sympathizers who helped in their plight, Kelly said if he sees more police, BITCH IT'S ON SIGHT! The Kelly gang ran from the law for a whole two years, but it was time to draw. They created suits of armor from hot metal to fight in shootouts and test their metal. But in a gunfight on a fateful day, when Ned Kelly was in the fray, he was shot where his armor wasn't, and Kelly said, OUCH! Needless to say, he got captured, and in the year 1880, he was raptured. Publicly hanged for all to see, but not until he said his final decree. Thousands of people witnessed his death, heard his words and dying breath. And so until today we carry the ardent roller coaster life of Ned Kelly. Alright, it's time to move on to other criminals. Here are a few criminals who turned their lives around. Kevin Mitnick was only 16 years old when he hacked into a corporation to steal their software. And after being in prison for the better part of 7 years, he turned his whole life around and started a security company. Frank William Abagnale, the guy who the movie Catch Me If You Can was about, became a famous con man at the young age of 21. After getting caught, he started working with the government and then later founded his own fraud consulting company. Michael Vick ran a dogfighting ring and got imprisoned for 18 months. Then he got signed by the Eagles in 2009 and started racking up a fortune. Well, those were criminals who were giga chats. I hope to god you liked the video and if you didn't, feel free to leave a death threat. Happy New Year.